Well, retirement should be something we look forward to, right? Not something we fear, but that's not the case for millions of Americans. Several factors cause people to be fearful about retirement. With those, Daryl Bryant, he's Omaha's retirement strategist. He's also the president of D. Bryant Retirement Strategies. And he hosts his own radio show, Retirement Strategies Radio, on KFAB right here in Omaha. Good morning, Daryl. How are hey, you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday. Good to see you. It is Monday. Uh -huh. yeah, it is Good Monday. weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get this week started off. We're going to talk about some fear factors this morning. And some of these are uh, not in our control. Uh, mm -hmm. um, some are. Uh, where do you want to start? Market volatility. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of fears going into retirement, naturally. Uh, market volatility being one of them. Naturally, if you're moving into retirement, you're concerned about a devaluation of your part portfolio mm -hmm. at the wrong time. There's one thing that we can't control, and that's the market, naturally. What we can control, however, is our uh, participation in it. And if we're going to be invested in the market, the type of investment procedures or tactics that we use. So most people will go into retirement looking like a 35-year-old or a 40-year-old on paper and have really only one tactic in terms of their money management, mm -hmm. meaning kind of a buy and hold and let's just ride this thing down in the dirt and up the mountain or whatever mm -hmm. it does. Well, that's really not good enough. Number one, let's separate some dollars from your portfolio in case we do have a devaluation. And those dollars that we are going to have at risk, a couple things. One is to uh, use a number of tactics like dynamic, momentum, uh, uh, and asset allocation type models. Okay, they do different things within your portfolio, so why not own them all within your family of portfolios? And then thirdly, or secondly, if we have, a, uh, if we have asset lock, on our portfolios, which we use in our office, we know, our clients know that if we, they were to see a steep devaluation, say 7.5% or a 10% devaluation, that's going to trigger a phone call from my office right away so that we can talk about what's happening within their portfolio because most people don't look at their portfolio as often as they might. Some people may not look at their statements all yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And so to have, have a mechanism that would trigger a phone call, Listen, we, we probably should talk. Things uh -huh. are getting a little bit out of control. Even with all of our wonderful money management, we don't control the market, right? So we should be having you know, really meaningful conversations if we have a decline in value with asset lock. But when you're talking about asset lock, if you're protecting that side of it, are you limiting? The bottom side. Right. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. are, what's the limitation on the top side? Yeah, great. That's a great question. Uh, first of all, no, we're not limiting the, the top side. We have all of the upside potential. In fact, uh -huh. if you set your portfolio up properly, uh, such as <clears throat> what I believe that we do, uh, we'll have asset lock to protect the bottom, uh -huh. but we're getting all of the upside that the, that the markets have to offer and at a lower fee. Why? Because we're using index funds like Vanguard and BlackRock iShares, uh -huh. et cetera, as opposed to those expensive mutual funds. So, yeah. great question. So, you can, yeah. you can have both. You can indeed. Yeah. Have your cake, eat it too. <laughs> you can, in this case, yes. Which we all enjoy. Uh, fear factor or number two. Yeah, taking Social Security at the right age. Not taking Social Security right age. Okay, yeah, big deal. Uh, that, here's the concerns with Social Security. Number one, is it going to be solvent? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, am I going to have Social Security at all? Uh, we believe that we're probably going to continue to push Social Security back. We already had changes on 11-3 in the middle of the night. We had changes in terms of file and suspend maneuvers, restricted applications, et cetera. That, that those have gone by the wayside. Uh, if you're not retired, those are just gone. Don't worry about it. Uh, it however, what we're concerned about is uh, uh, the Fed pushing back uh, Social Security receipt times. In other words, your full retirement age may not be 66 and some change. Maybe it's going to be 68, and maybe maximizing Social Security would be further out. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to, in terms of the, the most you could get, which is currently age 70, and maybe they'll move that to age uh, uh, you know, 71 or 72 or something, which is a big deal in terms of a federal budget. Uh, but we still need to maximize the Social Security and maximize pensions, mm -hmm. which has a lot to do with current health, longevity, family history, cash flows, yeah. et cetera. It sounds a little confusing maybe to a viewer here, but it, you know, just throw your stuff in a pile you know, and we'll go through this and make yeah. sure that you're on point. That's the great point with Daryl. You don't have to know the answers. You just have to <laughs> sort of sit down and start the conversation. Another fear factor is the passing of a spouse and talk about something you can't control, but, but it can affect you in a big way. Yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, we do have that, you know, being a retirement specific shop, our clients mm -hmm. are 62-ish when we meet them. Mm -hmm. We have uh, our average client around the office is maybe 70-ish, mm -hmm. you know, when we're doing reviews and so forth. So naturally, we do see uh, clients who have spouses that'll pass. Typically, the fella is older, mm -hmm. right, typically. Typically, uh, men pass earlier, uh -huh. so the probability of the man predeceasing the uh, uh, woman is very, very high. So you're outliving <coughs> your spouse. 
Yeah, and it's ordinarily the woman that's going to outlive uh, mm -hmm. the man. Okay, so she's going to have a number of problems. Number one, she's going to live longer, or she's going to lose one of the Social Securities, statistically probably her own, because statistically it's probably lower, but she'll lose her own Social, she'll pick up his, but she has all this emotional um, uh, stuff going on. Then she has to learn how to run the finances, because he probably uh, took care of things, you know, one of the reigns all those years, mm -hmm. and now she's in charge, and she has to become a money manager all of a sudden. So make sure you're working with somebody that you're comfortable with, the wife is comfortable with now, mm -hmm. because probably she's going to be the one calling the shots one yeah, day. She sense. probably ought to be right now. But right. Right. Probably, yeah, right. It probably all is. makes so much uh, sense. The last point, I want to make sure we get this. We've got about a minute yeah. left, and this yeah. is outliving their retirement savings. I know a lot of people fear this. Yeah, uh, that's a big deal. Uh, number one fear when people come into the office, have I done enough? Am I going to run out of money? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to need to do some very specific calculations. It's not difficult for us to do. Don't mm -hmm. be intimidated again by this. But if we are going to make sure that we're not going to run out of money, we're going to have to have a number of, of money management systems in place mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to have an underpinning of safe stuff mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. safe money safety first that's right yep and put yourself in a position where you can transfer some of that risk and be sure that you're never gonna outlive your money so some very very positive steps you can take and build a lot of confidence well, Daryl has a special offer for us today he's given away a free copy of his report called what do you know about retirement? This will go to the first 25 callers in it. You'll get the answers to five frequently asked questions about retirement that every retiree should know. The number to call is 402-932-2141. Daryl, this report's going to help a lot of people. Again, that number uh, is 402-932-2141. Yep. We'll also encourage you to go to dbryantretirementstrategies.com to learn more about Daryl and his team. Yeah, we'll also launch... Um a new segment, Ask the Strategist, coming up yes. uh, next week. And Can't wait. Uh, send your questions in, questions uh, at Omaha's Retirement Strategist.com. Make sure you put your name and phone number on there as well as your email. Thank you, Daryl. It's great to see you. Thank you. We'll yeah. see Thanks, you again Darryl. next Monday. Day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guests of the Morning Blend.